Well, 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 it seems that in our last watery base bout, our clear, undisputed winner was none other than Ananta Shisha, otherwise known as SCP-3000, the leviathan of the Bay of Bengal, a creature that spans the length of an entire ocean, if not more. In our most recent versus video, the biggest moray eel known to mankind ferociously faced off against the legendary kraken of mythology. But despite its massive tentacles and beaky bravado, it was quickly zombified, diced into calamari, and happily eaten up by our eel ocean. Overlord. But as many of you astutely noted, there's another worthy contender waiting in the wings, or the water, I guess. The water wings. Anyway, Jormungandir, the serpent that wraps around the world. And in this showdown, I've got a feeling that it's gonna be a close one, as things are a little bit apocalyptic, to say the least. Hello, internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question what if SCP 3000 fought Jormungandir? Roll the clip. Yeah, exactly. He's pretty damn huge, right? For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the resounding 2018 video game action adventure, the mythological based hack and slash God of War, where the bearded badass Kratos, alongside his son Atreus, aka Boy, I've always wanted to say that, actually teamed up with the Midgard Serpent, united by their shared hatred of the Aesir. That's pretty important, so hold on to that for the time being. Now, please note that in this video, we're going to have to take a few hypothetical liberties, particularly in the instance of Mr. Jormungandir, and the fictional implications of his stature vary from mythological text to modern day video game depiction and it's safe to say that there's a lot of serpent to cram into a relatively small planet. It goes without saying really but to face off two of the largest creatures in fiction is going to take a little bit of mental gymnastics. Before we kick off this torrent of torment though it's probably best that we first take a quick look at these two aquatic leviathans and pick out just exactly what they've got stashed in their serpentine skill set. Now if you haven't seen any of our recent SCP-3000 videos then now would be high time to saunter over to our playlist and check them out because it's safe to say that we're pretty well versed in the inner workings of the serpent's coil. For those of you that don't know though, SCP-3000 is a giant anomalous eel residing deep in the depths of the Bay of Bengal, currently under remote containment by the SCP Foundation. Now we won't bog you down with its inner workings but there are several important things that you'll need to know about SCP-3000. One, it's an anomalous moray eel. Two, it's absolutely massive, as in gigantic, believed to measure anywhere between 600 and 900 kilometers and three, it loves eating people and it produces a highly potent psychoactive eel jelly on the surface of its skin that shatters the minds of humans and lesser mentally astute sea creatures alike. It's a simple formula, but it's an important one to remember. Instead though, let's take a look at the contender in the northern corner, our boy the Midgard serpent Jormungandir. And let's not beat about the bush because let's face it, SCP-3000 has got one hell of a scrap on its hands. Wait, the eels have hands? No. Now, to figure out its size, we can take a look at its first direct reference, Norse mythology, where it becomes a pretty easy equation. The world serpent equals a serpent that can span the width of the planet. And that's really, really big, already infinitely bigger than SCP-3000. In the Prose Eda, written by Snorri Sturluson, Jormungandir was one of the Jotun, a race of giant mythical creatures in antithesis to the gods. He was the middle child of the trickster god Loki and the giantess Angra Boda, alongside their other children, the wolf Fenrir and Hel, Queen of the Damned. Now, it's safe to say that the Allfather Odin didn't much like Loki's strange new children and so kicked them out of Asgard, tossing Jormungandir into the great ocean that encircled Midgard, where he quickly became a very hefty boy and grew so large that he could grasp his own tail. The thing is, though, in this hypothetical showdown for Jormungandir to even show up to the battle, it can only mean one thing. Yeah, you guessed it, guys. It's Ragnarok. Now, I'm just kidding guys, because the mechanical implications of Jormungandir would be too damn overpowered under the effects of the Norse apocalypse, mainly being that during Ragnarok, the world serpent is prophesied to emerge out of the ocean, poisoning the sea and the skies with its highly potent venom, which is a secretion powerful enough to kill even the thunder god himself. Thor. If Jormungandir possesses a poison that could kill one of the most powerful Aesir ever known and subsequently polluted the entire seven seas with it, it's safe to say that SCP-3000 wouldn't even stand a chance and the Bay of Bengal would quickly become its watery grave before it had a chance to showdown against the serpent. But 
That's no fun, is it? You guys came for a battle of mammoth proportions, so let's face them off physically, which really is going to be a whole feat of its own, actually. Under the serpent's recorded stature in Norse mythology, Jormungandr would be so damn huge that it could easily swallow the anomalous eel. After all, 900 kilometers is nothing compared to the diameter of the planet, which is 12,742 kilometers. Yeah, mathematically speaking, this showdown is pretty cut and shut. Now, there is one trick up SCP-3000 sleeve though. Wait, the eels have sleeves? No. Because we're not taking into account that highly potent eel jelly that became the ruin of the Kraken in our previous battle. If Jormungandr swallowed SCP-3000 whole, slipped down its throat like a giant spaghetti noodle, there's a good chance that the Midgard Serpent is about to trip some serious, serious balls after not knowing that the noodle is in fact covered with the most potent amnestic substance known to mankind. In that case, there's a small chance that this showdown would be more akin to the Game of Thrones depiction of the Viper. Oberyn Martell versus the Mountain, Gregor Clegane, and despite the Midgard Serpent seemingly chowing down on SCP-3000 with ease, the effects of its eel jelly would eventually melt Jormungandr's mind, probably forcing it to eat itself all over again, explode its own head, or some equally gruesome outcome. However, I do say a small chance, because we also have to take into account the fact that Jormungandr is absolutely huge, and mathematically speaking, it's infinitely vast proportions would likely negate SCP-3000's amnestic effects. If anything, there's a good chance that chowing down on this anomalous eel would be the equivalent of Jormungandr having a particularly pleasant pint of ale, giving him that familiar warm fuzzy feeling that surely even sea serpents know and love. Let's just hope he doesn't get a taste for it because I for one wouldn't be the one to cut him off. The fact of the matter is, despite SCP-3000's highly capable abilities against equally sized sea creatures, Jormungandr is just too massive for this to ever be a fair fight. SCP-3000's only hope would be if Thor got to him first, and I'm not entirely sure what terms the Foundation are currently on with the Aesir. Oh crap, I've done it again. I've said too much. On that note, there we have it, our comprehensive fictional showdown to the question, what if SCP-3000 fought Jormungandr? The World Serpent would be chowing down on some serious spaghetti. Poor little guy. Well, what do you guys think? How do you think it would play out? Please let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart though, let's take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Zarg X says, SCP-3000, I'm the biggest. Jormungandr, hold my beer. Yeah. I know, right? Exactly as I called it. Well, I'm not sure if anyone can top that, so on that note, that's unfortunately all we've got time for in today's video. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied flowing voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>